Hello everyone, welcome to Tathastu ICS. Today we are going to talk about someone who is called one of the first revolutionaries of India. Someone who sacrificed his life for the motherland, for motherland India at the age of 24. And someone when he died, his family even refused to take up his body. Okay. And the name is Madan Lal Dingra. So today we are going to talk about this gentleman, about Madan Lal Dingra who sacrificed his life at the age of 24 with a broad smile, with a broad smile for India. Okay, and we are going to talk about him because on this 17th August, the nation celebrated his uh, 114th death anniversary. Specifically, this is important because in Amritsar, there is a memorial which is being formally inaugurated in the honor of Mother Lal Dingra. Okay, so today we are going to talk about him, his early life and brief stories and his brief collaborations with the people around him. This is going to be very much important video for you, not only in the honor of Mr. Madhulal Dingra, but also for the facts, for, for those things which are important for prelims. Because recently it has been seen that UPSC is constantly asking about these kind of people, people who are not very much popular because it has been said that Madhulal Dingra is one of those revolutionaries who has been forgotten by India. Okay, So, those revolutionaries, those freedom fighters who played a prominent role in the freedom of India, but they are not very much discussed in the streets, in the roads, in the books. So, UPSC is quite keen towards them. Okay. So, this is important for prelims. Now, with that perspective, let's look into it. Okay. Who was Mother Lal Dingra? We'll talk about his early life. Then, we'll talk how he shifted towards, uh, his idea shifted towards nationalism. From where this small boy turned into that man who is able, who is ready to sacrifice his life for the nation. Then, we'll talk his idea, his idea of nationalism because the idea of nationalism specifically in these times, specifically in India, now we are discussing about nationalism for last few years because of various reasons and his idea of nationalism is quite different from others. And then we will talk about something, some mischievousness of, of him. Okay. So, his early life, he was born on September 18, 1883 in an affluent family in Amritsar. His father was a staunch British loyalist and working as a chief medical officer. Okay, So, by this information, by this fact, it is very much evident that not only they were from the affluent family, not only they were from the rich family, but also his father was quite educated. His father, he, he belonged to a well-educated family. Okay, Now, what time, what was the time when he shifted towards this, these uh, nationalistic thoughts uh, and what was the time? where his idea of India was coming uh, coming out. So, Dingra's exposure to nationalist movements in Lahore during his studies ignited his patriotism. Okay, So, his idea of India and his idea that his motherland India should be free from the yoke of Britishness, it came for the first time when he was studying in Lahore. Okay, And his idea of nationalism, because nationalism is a broad term and people can be motivated for it through different dimensions because of different reasons. Okay, So, De Mr. Dingra was excited for the nationalism and his idea of nationalism was because of the socio-economic concerns of India. Okay, Now, we all know that at the peak of British Empire, the Britishers were so cruel. Okay, They were cruel, be it the economic aspect of it, the uh, drain theory or the, the, the way that the, our wealth passed on to the Britishers and are all, all cultural things, all importantly, important cultural things went into the British land. Okay, be it that or the socio-economic conditions of India because Indians were able to compare themselves that socially also we are on, only allowed to be at the lower rungs of any official post and economically also uh, there is a struggle that ki roti bhi milna mushkil hoti thi, something like that. Okay. So, the socio-economic concerns were driven by a sense of justice and concerns for India's impoverished masses and Dingra's patriotism extended to economic, socio-economic issues. Okay? So, this patriotism was extended towards the socio-economic aspect of India. Okay? Now, he was ex also expelled, there is a small story that he was expelled from the college for protesting against the use of British imported clothes. Now, this was the time when the extremists, the moderates were done with all their efforts and the ex extremists had took over the Congress and the extremists called for the ban on the imports, uh, ban on the use of the British imported clothes. Okay, And he was the one who protested for it. He was, he was the one who supported the idea. Okay, And that was the reason he was expelled from his college also. Now, Dingra's defiance marked his commitment to the cause because 
he at the age because he died at 24 okay and he died in london he was uh, studying in lahore at this time he must be around 2021 20, something like that and at the age of 2021 20, there was a man who was extremely determined that even if you want to disqualify me even if i belong to an educated family and there the significance of education is more still the idea of india and the reason the 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 love for the freedom is is more significant it has more weight okay so he chose this he chose this part now this is the man and the the, the way i was saying that he accepted this whole thing because he said thank you my lord i don't care i'm proud to have the honor of laying down my life for the cause of my motherland so this was the time when the judge announced him that he will be executed for his acts what were his acts so he assassinated the british official sir william curzon wiley while he was studying in england and regarded as one of the first acts of revolution okay he was hanged for killing mr curzon and he was closed to Vinayak Damodar Savarkar also. Now, in today's time also, Vinayak Damodar Savarkar is a prominent personality because of the political reasons. But for you, it's important to know the literature related to Vinayak Damodar Savarkar and anything which contributed towards the freedom of India, towards the betterment of India. As a student of history and as an aspirant of UPSC, this is your duty to be aware of all those things. He was buried in England and his body was repatriated to India in 1976. So this was the time he he was announced, sentenced, he, he, he got killed way before than this. But 1976 was the time when his body came back to India. Okay. And his remains are kept in Akola, Maharashtra. Okay. So these were some important facts related to him. Now his involvement in the revolutionary circles. Okay. And people also choose uh, if someone wants to just pass the time then he'll he'll choose the sangat he'll, he'll choose the company of those people who are just playing the cards okay he was the person he was the man who was thinking that it is important for india to get the freedom so he was sitting he was sharing his thoughts with those people who were on the same page okay so these are few examples and these abhinav bharat mandal india house are important from the perspective of prelims also okay so be careful hero also now contact with the leaders his contact with leaders was dingra was connected with the prominent figures like vinayak damodar savarkar in india he was connected with vinayak damodar savarkar even it was said that, that vinayak damodar savarkar was the person who initiated him who pushed him that he sh he should uh, kill karzan okay and in London also, he was attached to Shyamji Krishna Verma, who was active in London, London's revolutionary circles. Okay, so Shyamji Krishna Verma was a prominent personality who was uh, taking some efforts outside India, sitting outside India, sitting in London. Still, from there, he was putting his efforts. The, he he was uh, trying to do the things which could help India in any way. And in India and outside India also, he was in the company of those people. Now, there is also one another organization, small group, and he was also the part of this, that, that is India House. Dingra frequently visited the India House and a hub, the India House is considered a hub for revolutionary Indian nationalism founded by Shyamji Krishnavarma. Now, India House was also founded by him. So, please be careful with this fact. These small facts are very much important for your prelim, prelims perspective. And they further ignited his revolutionary spirit. He, he had this revolutionary spirit from the younger ages. That, that is why he has been able to cultivate over it. That is why uh, the other people who were associated with, with him, they were able to ignite it further. Okay. Another organization with which he was associated was Abhinav Bharat Mandal. Now, Dingra joined Abhinav Bharat Mandal, which was founded by of Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, Vinayak Savarkar, where he refined his plan to assassinate the Curzon Wiley. Okay, so he was also because of this organization and because with the association of Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, it has been said this is the photo of Vinayak Savarkar, it has been said that this was the reason why he killed him. Now, the story of the assassination of Mr. Curzon, now what is this? The Curzon Wiley was a British Indian official and the intelligence officer known for collecting information on revolutionaries. Okay, as, and as I told you, as we discussed that uh, this uh, uh, Madanlal Dingra, he was one of the first revolutionaries. Okay, and the person Curzon, 
he was responsible for collecting information for these revolutionaries and not making the plans which would eventually hurt them okay so the assassination on july 1 1909 dingra attended an event where the curzon valley was present and dingra shot five shots fatally hitting both curzon and the doctor who tried to intervene okay five shots uh, there was a there, there was a person who might have uh, organized the party and he invited both Curzon and as I told you, he was from a well-educated, influential, affluent family. So, he might also be, have been invited there or he may have sneaked in but ultimately the reason, ultimately the result was five shots okay? and uh, this gentleman, Mr. Curzon was dead. Now, Dingra's justification, how Dingra justified it, uh, as I showed you in this slide also that what he said to the judge specifically that, thank you, my lord, I don't care, I am proud to have the honor of laying down my life for the cause of my motherland. So, one thing is for sure that he's, he, he was not guilty, he was not feeling guilty, but what has he done and how he justified all these things? His justification was during his trial, Dingra argued that if fighting Germans was patriotic for an Englishman, then for an Indian person fighting Britishers is justiciable. Okay? You can justify it, you, it uh, that if Germans are able to fight Britishers for the same reason, then Indians are also legally, ethically, morally correct. It is correct on the part of Indians that they are fighting the Britishers. Okay? Now, the legacy and the memorial. Why is this memorial important? What is the legacy of uh, Mother Lal Dhingra? So, the execution and burial, Dingra was found guilty, executed on this date, August 17, 1909 and this is, uh, this August 17 was the 114th death, death anniversary of the gentleman and he was buried in London. His remains was, were brought to India in 1976. Now, struggle for memorial, people have regularly been saying that there should be a specific memorial for Madan Lal Dingra and from the region where he comes from, that Amritsar region, people are also excited for all those things. Uh, there is a cultural and social aspect of it. And one thing is also there that he inspired the generations. Now, it has been always debated that who is a better player, Virat Kohli or Sachin Tendulkar, who is more influential, who is better. Eh? And one thing is there that why people call Sachin better or why Virat Kohli also call Sachin better because Sachin Tendulkar was someone who inspired the whole generation to play cricket. Virat Kohli played cricket because of Sachin. Mahindra Singh Dhoni, Virendra Sehwag played cricket because of Sachin. So, there is one perspective. This is one perspective. You, you can have another angle to it. But if there is person who has good stats, another person who has good stats, but there is someone who inspired the generation, who inspired people to play like the Kapil Dev team of 1983 in, inspired Sachin Tendulkar to play and the whole generation to play cricket and look towards cricket as a profession as something through which they can bring glory to India. Similarly, Madan Lal Dingra was the person who was, who was responsible or who was the reason for which the generations Bhagat Singh lead Bhagat Singh or someone else who got inspired, who might have got inspired through him ki there is a person who did something like this and maybe uh, there was a path of uh, we as Indians and we uh, keeping Bapu Mahatma Gandhi at the top of everything. So, we are we are the ones who will always support non-violence but th there is one segment of it and there is one idea of it who supported the whole idea and the Indians also have their affiliations and their soft corner and their respect towards all these things, towards all these peoples and their efforts. Okay, so. That is why there is whole struggle for this memorial. Now, the inauguration of this particular memorial was also inaugurated by the governor Banwari Lal Purohit, who is the governor of Punjab and this memorial also has the significance. What is the significance? It stands as a tribute to Dingra's sacrifice and his role in the fight for India's freedom and his role to inspire the generations ahead, his role to let people know what is the significance of India's freedom and to inspire people that they should also be ready to give any sacrifice for the freedom and for integrity, sovereignty and the respect of motherland India. Okay, so this was Madan Lal Dingra and his story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. We'll meet in the other class. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.